Hey everybody, I am back and I've been off of YouTube for like two months and I feel terrible about it. Um, I'd say at least one month of it <laughs> I've been gone because I actually went to New Orleans uh, for a, I guess it's a field trip, it was a field school, it was a course I took there through my university. Anyway, I won't go into that, it was really cool, it was my last course ever, so I am done university, I'm very excited, I have my degree now. So anyway, um, besides that, I didn't do any videos there, I got back, I went in through this weird spell of like I'm bored and I don't know what game to play and like I took on two challenges like I was playing Persona 4 and Xenoblade Chronicles both really long games not just RPGs long RPGs and then it was kind of like I've been embedding this thing in my head like no you can play one game on a handheld one game on a console at a time and it's been very frustrating because I'm like ah, I just want to start something new so basically <laughs> I was sort of in a gaming funk, as uh, Stephen the Leggy Gamer says, uh, and it was really annoying. And then I started playing other things, blah, blah. So I am back. I'm so excited to make videos again, and I won't keep rambling about that. But today, um, I wanted to do a video basically talking about why RPGs are my favorite genre, specifically JRPGs. I know Dustin Christ has a video on, you know, the WRPG versus the JRPG, and I'd, I'd almost like to do a response to that um, because I really am not a fan of WRPG uh, games. I really like the JRPG so much better. Um, again, lots of reasons for that, but that's not what I want to talk about today. Today I want to talk about why I just love RPGs so much and why they're my favorite genre. I'd say my other favorite genre would be platformers, but I feel like RPG is just a bit higher. I don't know, maybe they're tied regardless. It's one of my favorite, if not favorite genre. Um, so how I got into RPGs is pretty much um, Earthbound and Super Mario RPG. Um, so yes, I have Earthbound, as, <laughs> as everybody knows who follows my channel. And I have Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, both uh, in my top 10 games of all time for sure. Earthbound's my number one favorite game of all time. Um, but yeah, uh, both phenomenal games. Basically, uh, you know, I was really, like I was a little kid when a lot of these, you know, favorite games came out, like the Golden Age, the Super Nintendo games came out. So honestly, I missed out a ton. I missed out on a ton of these games like Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VI. I missed out. I just didn't rent them or buy them when I was a little kid because I didn't know what they were. And none of my other friends were playing them. It was all about Super Mario and Donkey Kong and stuff. So it just wasn't happening. Um, Earthbound was a complete accident. Um, I don't really remember which one I played first. It's one of the two though, 100%. I, I don't know, but um, I remember sort of the moment when I first played Super Mario RPG for the first time and I rented it at this video store that was near my grandma's house. And oh my God, it was just, it just blew me away because the only games from then I'd played were the original three Super Mario Brothers games and I'd played Super Mario World. So it was, it was so different. I didn't really know what this was, like, you know, selecting um, attacks and um, fighting bosses that weren't the stereotypical, like, platformer boss. And it was just a weird thing. There was an actual, s it was a different story. You met characters, you went on this journey. It felt very different to me and I really liked it. Something has always caught my eye as well with aerial view type games. I don't know why, but I just love uh, the aerial view thing. It really makes me excited. And I know they don't do that with the new ones, like, you know, RPGs on like the PS3 or Wii or whatever. But, um, and, well, I guess I should say that 3D Doc Game Heroes exists. But anyway, it's a, kind of an old thing. And I, I just love sprite graphics. There's something about aerial view games that I just love so much. I don't really know why, but it's just, I don't know. I love the graphics. I love the... Um, the little dialogue boxes that come up. There's just something really cool about it to me. And it felt like when I first played these games, I was actually going on a journey. It wasn't just, oh, I got to get to the next level. Although that's fun. This was actually like something is I'm progressing through a story and it was really cool. Um, so now I'll admit to you, like I remember playing Earthbound and I think I remember the, the one I consistently rented. The guy was up to Threed, the city Threed. Um, which is like the third city in the game. I, I guess you could say it's like fourth, but regardless. Um, and I would always just play there and not really understanding fully what was going on. But I did kind of understand what was going on enough to talk with all the people in the town and understand it. It just seemed really cool. It was a little bit puzzly, but a little bit, um, 
I don't know. It was just really cool. And I rented it from Blockbuster a lot and they actually gave you the game guide. It was so cool. So I would, I would read it. I was like, wow, I felt like I, it really was a world that existed. Like on it was a real town. Um, it just really cool stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, these two games definitely got me into the genre 100% and wow, nothing but amazing memories with this game. Uh, the other thing about these that I want to talk about is the music. Um, I've always found that RPGs have brilliant music. Obviously, there's exceptions, but generally, like all the music that is very memorable to me, that's not sort of silly, comes from RPGs. Like obviously, you know, Koji Kondo has done amazing scores for like Super Mario uh, World, Super Mario Brothers 3, regardless, and like all the Donkey Kong scores. In fact, Donkey Kong Country is pretty good. I mean, it. Um, it's pretty amazing as far as the music goes um, and it, is, it isn't as silly as Super Mario and those are just they're just standards now almost who doesn't know the Super Mario Brothers theme but regardless they're the music in RPGs although they were on the Super Nintendo console and they didn't sound like they were from a movie they were all MIDI files they were still really cool and when hearing them orchestrated you go wow like that's really good stuff so I sort of um, view music in RPGs pretty highly they're pretty awesome so yeah the music from these stuck in my head like it, it really made the experience more real so definitely a huge factor for me is why i like rpgs is because of the scores because i am a huge uh, score person movie and uh, video games um so after playing these games i i really liked the genre i didn't really explore it though again i was really little um I, if I would have been a teenager um, during some of these, you know, when these games came out, it, it would have maybe been different, but these are kind of the only RPGs I played, and I always just thought they were really cool. Um, then a little franchise called Pokemon came out, and that was a huge deal, and I actually had blue, but I traded it away when I was a little kid, stupid, but I do have red now, so pretty good. Um, the music in that, I still hold as one of it's in my top five scores of all time from the original like blue and red they're all pretty good but wow there's something pretty amazing about the scores uh to pokemon red and blue or um yeah they're just amazing so those came out and really truly it was like a emphasis on okay i really do love this genre it's so good um i really truly went on an adventure in the kanto region when i played pokemon it really was real um it just seemed like, I've always liked games where you go from town to town. I don't know if this sounds stupid, but in RPGs, to me, the, getting to the town is like the most exciting part in the game. Like you can be going through a cave in a dungeon and people think that's really cool. My whole thing is getting out of the dungeon and seeing what the town's gonna look like when you get to the other side. I've just always liked that. Like, you know, when you got to Viridian City, it was like, whoa, this is so cool. Um, <laughs> And like, you know, different, there's just different, like Lavender Town, like I still remember it. And like the score that accompanied each city was just so memorable. Those games were incredible. I know they really did appeal to kids at first, but I mean, the Pokemon series is still running. It's still like, I think it not it the second biggest uh, Nintendo franchise next to Super Mario? I'm not 100% sure, but I think it is. But anyway, it's a huge series for good reason. Um, very memorable. They're very repetitive games, I admit, and I know in black and white they tried to change it and give it more of a story as opposed to just, you know, becoming a Pokemon master, um, which was great. But honestly, the Pokemon games were great and they truly, like, it was, when that came out, it was like, yes, I like RPGs big time. Um, yeah, just really amazing stuff. Then, um, the next one is kind of an iffy one as far as, like, whether some people don't call it an RPG, some people do. I still kind of consider Legend of Zelda to be an RPG. I know it's not in some ways, but to me it's almost like an action RPG game, if that makes any sense. It, it is, I don't know. You take the role of Link and whatever. So I, I really do. Now I don't have uh, Ocarina of Time for N64. I used to, but again, being a stupid kid, I sold it and I have um, rebought it for the 3DS. Um, and I, I don't plan on getting it for the N64. I don't care. I don't need double copies. It's cool. It's, it, like Earthbound, <laughs> I, I will eventually get the Mother 2 cartridge because I just love it so much, but this is fine. This is good enough and the graphics are better, so I'm totally cool with this and I love handheld RPGs big time. But this game was like basically my whole childhood was this game. Um, 
It was, it was so fun. And again, I think it all comes down to the music. These scores are brilliant. Like they're never bad at all. There's a reason why there's a Legend of Zelda symphony that tours around North America. Like there's a reason that exists and why it's not just, like I've been to video games live, but there actually is a Legend of Zelda symphony because every game has fen like phenomenal music. Uh, so I'm not um, surprised why these games have that. They're just great. Uh, the one thing though about Legend of Zelda as I've gotten older, it really kind of pisses me off a bit because it's a little too puzzly for my taste. I just, you know, trying to, you'll go into a dungeon and you have to find a way to get into a door and it just drives me nuts. And I, I sort of, that's an element that's not in other RPGs and why a lot of people don't consider this to be, you know, a typical JRPG. And that's totally cool. Um, but there was something about exploring, you know, Hyrule and, Oh, it was just amazing. And meeting all the different races, it was just phenomenal. So yeah, I, this game is, it's fa fantastic. It's one of the best games ever made, in my opinion. Uh, and it holds nostalgia for me, as do all these games, uh, because they were the first for me. Like, this was the first Zelda game I ever played, so huge memories there. Um, and there were no walkthroughs, there was no YouTube. I mean, I guess you could buy the game guide, but I never had it. And, you know, I remember calling like, some hotline to get tips and there was no internet. So you had to just figure it out. And it was a big, to me, uh, I played this with my friend and it was like, he had, a, he had a copy, I had a copy. And then he'd be like, well, are you in that dungeon yet? Okay, how did you do it? And it would be a very, it was very social. Um, nowadays, I don't understand something. I just go on YouTube and go, oh, okay, you just walk over there and do it. Or that button has to be pressed. So, I don't know, it, it, <laughs> I almost wonder how did I do that, and I was a little kid, but uh, this game is really great, the characters are really great, you meet all these different races and they're so fun. Um, I always liked, again, getting to a new town and seeing like the history behind certain people, and it was just really cool, and that is, I mean, this is why I like RPGs so much. You go into another world, uh, you experience from somebody else's perspective, and you really get into that character. Um, now, Super Mario RPG is a little different because, I mean, when it comes down to it, it is a Super Mario game. He is saving Peach from Bowser. But it's a bit, di you know what I mean? Like, it's a bit different, so uh, I do... <laughs> It's different and it's not. Um, so, you know, I never really got into it as, as far as that way. But, like, Earthbound, uh, completely different. I mean, you're, you're four kids um, trying to save the world. And I know most RPGs, they're all about saving the world. Um, but this one was different because you were little kids. And it made it so much more interesting. And the weapons were different. And um, just really weird. Like, you know, your mom would call you and ask how you were doing. And it just weird. I, I really liked it. Um, and I think because I played such a quirky game like this first and Super Mario RPG, which is, it is quirky. I mean, there's some weird stuff in this game um, for a Super Mario game. Like people think they know Super Mario and they play this and you're like, well, that's different. Um, and to me, this has also been, it's the best RPG that they've made in the Super Mario series, like way better than, um, uh, what are those like Mario Luigi games? They're really good, but they're not... They're just not up to this level. And uh, Paper Mario was amazing. Um, and I still need to get a cart uh, for that. I don't have it. The Wii, the GameCube one I never played and the Wii one I have. And it just didn't, it just didn't grab me. It's not the same. So I don't know, this game is like top notch. All these games are top notch. And RPGs are a fantastic genre. If you've always thought to yourself, like, I don't know if RPGs are for me. There is so much out there, I swear to God, like you have no idea within one genre how much, you know, diversity and variety there is. It's so cool. I mean, like there are certain RPGs where it's like, you know, you select your attack and you select what to do. And then there's other ones where, I mean, like Legend of Zelda, where you, you're walking around or like Skyrim, you don't select your attack. Um, it's very action based. Um, so there's something for everybody. RPGs are honestly the best, in my opinion. Um, as with platformers, I love those, and I'll probably do a video on that and why I love platformers so much and why they are as frustrating as they can get. Um, but yeah, this little guy here has made me love uh, RPGs, I think, more than a lot of things because I spent so much time outside at recess just sitting here, very antisocial, going on an adventure. Um, <laughs> And yeah, they're just, 
RPGs are fantastic. So um, I recommend all four of these games, and I'm very excited that this is going to be on the virtual console soon, Earthbound. I know this already is, Super Mario RPG. I mean, this is affordable. You can find it for like $15, $20. And I mean, they've redone this like at least three times uh, because it's also in Heart Gold, Soul Silver. So these are all accessible. Go check them out if you've never played them. I cannot stress enough how awesome these games are and why I love RPGs. And I'll see you guys later.